Hey, welcome back. My name is Drew, and when I was a kid, <laughs> back in my day, when I was a kid, I used to doodle a lot. And one of my favorite things to doodle was this thing where you make a, a V shape with two line segments, and then you mark off evenly spaced points along each line, and then you draw more lines connecting the points on the two line segments in sort of this opposite way. You get this cool web shape thing that's, you know, very geometric. And if you draw a lot of them kind of together, you get a really neat design. I later found out that some people like to do the same thing, but with strings, you know, just like connecting pegs on a wooden board. So that's what we're making today. But of course, because it's me, we're doing it in GeoGebra. All right, let's do this. So I'm gonna start with a very simple version of this just to get used to the ideas of how we'll make our string art in GeoGebra, but then we'll later make it more flexible, make it so you can move things around, change colors, all that stuff. But let's start with the basics. I'm gonna zoom in and we're gonna make our first string art by having the two sort of initial segments being the x-axis between zero and one and the y-axis between zero and one. So all of our intermediate line segments will be sort of connecting the two axes here. First, the thing I'm gonna make is a slider that we'll use to sort of just set how many points or how many subdivisions I want along each segment. I'm gonna call it N, and let's say N is, how about um, 10 to start, and we're gonna go to the settings for this slider and set it so that the least it can be is one, the most it can be is, how about 50, and the increment is one. So what we need to do now is make what I'm gonna call the pegs. We need to make points that lie along the x-axis. The way we're gonna do this is with a sequence. And I'm gonna assume that you already know a little bit about sequences. If you don't, I made a video about it and I will put it up in the top corner right now. Go check it out if you want a little bit more background on how the sequence command works. So we're gonna make a list of points. Let's call it pegs x. So it's the pegs on the x-axis. It's a sequence of points. All of the points have different X coordinate. They have X coordinates between zero and one. The Y coordinates are all zero. Um, and so yeah, X is the variable. It goes from zero to one. And the interval size is gonna be the length of the interval from zero to one divided by N, which is just one over N. Boom. We do that, we get these equally spaced points along the X axis, that's great. Let's do the same thing for y. So I'm gonna make pegs y. It's gonna be a sequence with points with x coordinate zero, y coordinate a variable. y will go from zero to one and we'll have an increment size of the same thing, one over n. And of course the cool thing about doing this in GeoGebra, the cool thing about using sliders is I can change n and change the number of points that I have along here. So those are our pegs. Next, let's make our string. So for our string, our string is gonna take the form of line segments that connect points along the x-axis to points along the y-axis. So it's gonna be a sequence of segments, and each segment is gonna be from pegs x of k, so the kth thing along here, to pegs y of n minus k, so sort of the opposite point, kind of working our way from the top down on the, on the y-axis. And so k is our variable, k is gonna go from one to n, which is how many things we have. Hit enter, and boom, we got it. And you might notice that it didn't actually hit these uh, points in the end here. That's okay, I didn't index this very carefully. I could have adjusted what we put into here to make it match all of the points, but it's close enough for this sort of dry run just to show how to put together these sequences. Um, and also, if we take n to be something you know, sufficiently large, you don't even notice. You get to, you just see this nice sort of uh, string art thing here. Cool. So that's how it works. And this is what we'll do in general. We'll make a set of pegs, which are just going to be points. It's going to be a list of points along the line. Um, we're going to make two sets of pegs and then we'll connect them in exactly this way with segments between, you know, the kth element of one set of pegs and the n minus kth element of another set. But what we're gonna do next is make it so that we can kind of move this thing around. So we're gonna make it a little bit more flexible and kind of more interesting. 
And to start with our more you know, general version of this, let's make some points. These points are gonna be the endpoints of that letter V. We'll call them A, put that at one, one, B, which is gonna be at one, two, and C, which is gonna be at two, one. Now, because I made these as points, it's worth noting I can I can move these around and that's gonna be what kind of gives us our uh, increased flexibility here. And here's probably the trickiest part. We wanna make a sequence of points that go from A to C and are evenly spaced and lie along you know, the line segment from A to C. There are a lot of ways to do this, but here's the way that makes the most sense to me. I'm gonna actually make a vector. I'm gonna call it uh, AC the vector that points from A to C, and the way we can quickly make that is by just doing C minus A. And we have this vector down here. If you're interested in learning more about vectors, of course, I made a video about vectors too. Go check that out. In particular, if you're wondering why this made a vector when I subtracted two points and called it lowercase ac, it's all in that video. Check it out. For now, um, let's also make a similar thing for AB, the vector that's gonna point from A to B. That will, of course, just be B minus A. And it puts these vectors here for us, and it'll, of course, update them if we move any of the points around. Note that they're vectors, so it doesn't actually matter where they are. GeoGebra, by default, will draw vectors with their base at the origin, but we really just care about them as directions. So for our sequence of points between A and C, let's make that. We're going to call it pegs AC. It's going to be a sequence. And for the sequence, here's how we're going to think about it. If we took this vector that points from A to C, so this vector AC, and divided it by N, then we would have a vector that points in the same direction, but whose length was, in this case, you know, 10 times shorter, so one-tenth of the original size. And so that vector AC divided by N, you can imagine that fitting in here 10 times. It, each one points in this direction, but we could fit 10 of them into this segment between A and C. So what we're gonna do is have our points and our sequence start at A and increase by multiples of AC divided by N. You'll see what I mean. So our expression for our sequence is A plus K, which is our variable, times AC divided by N. K is our variable. K is gonna go from one to N. I think I want it to be N minus one so that it stops before it gets to C. Okay, as you can see, that gave us what we want. If you're not 100% clear about why that worked, that's okay. If you just wanna follow along with the construction, um, you can totally go ahead and just make the art. You don't need to understand how the math works. On the other hand, if you know a little bit about vector geometry, then maybe you can take a moment to you know, pause the video or something like that and put together why this works for giving us different points along this segment. I'll leave that up to you. For now though, let's make our next set of pegs, the pegs between A and B. It's gonna be almost exactly the same thing. You can kind of copy this. It's gonna be the sequence we're starting at A and we are going by multiples of the vector AB divided by N where K goes from one to N minus one. All right, so we're at the very bottom here and we're gonna make our strings that connect corresponding points between these two sets of points. So it's gonna work exactly the same way as before. It's gonna be a sequence of segments. Each segment is gonna be between the kth thing, the kth point in pegs AC, and the n minus kth point in pegs AB. K is gonna go from one to n, does that work? Never sure if I want it to be n or n plus one, n minus one. Usually, if I don't feel like thinking about it too hard, I just play with it until one of the things works. Um, but here it looks like N is the right thing to do. And there we go, we have it. Uh, we can scroll back up here and make N really big and uh, move this around and it'll sort of keep our strings attached to the right stuff for us. That's pretty cool. Um, something I don't like about this is, well, actually a few things about how it looks. Let's clean it up a bit. Let's get rid of these vectors here. We don't actually need to see them. We actually don't need to see them here either. So here's what I'm gonna do. Select one of the vectors and go to settings here. And I'm going to deselect show object so it won't show up in our view and I'm gonna make it an auxiliary object and it won't show up here anymore. Let's do the same thing for that vector AB. Deselect show object 
select auxiliary object, and it's gone. There's a way to get it back if we needed it later, but we're not gonna need it. So, all right, that's looking better. Let's do a little bit more to touch up the color and the size of some things here. So I'm gonna select both sets of pegs. So I can do that by clicking this sort of outside area here and pressing the control key and then clicking the same thing down here. Right click and go to settings. I'm gonna go to the style tab and make the points a little bit smaller. And I'm gonna make the color a dark sort of greenish blue. And then we'll do something similar for the strings. Let's go to settings, style, make them a little bit thinner so we can see more of them. And we'll also make them blue. There we go, awesome. Now, all right, while we still have this grid here, I wanna show you something that I think is cool. This is a little bit more mathematics in this, but notice what happens when I take N to be like mega large. So if I do that, then, okay, we have a lot of strings here. You can kind of see like there's a curve, like there's a smooth curve that is lying sort of on the boundary of this object. We don't need to get into the mathematics of like what actually defines this curve here, but there's like, there's a curve here, you know? And it turns out that this curve, uh, no matter how you have these points positioned, this curve is always a parabola. Like it's something that looks like, you know, Y equals X squared. Um, I think that's really cool. And okay, so this is not gonna be a proof of what I just said, but if I move things around a bit, I can actually get it so that the curve that is on the boundary of our string art is right on that parabola. Isn't that cool? So like hiding and showing the parabola, like it is, it is lying right on this boundary. And you know, if you're mathematically inclined here, maybe you can think about other ways to make uh, shapes like this by connecting string in maybe different ways and see if you can get some other shapes. Anyways, what I want to do next is let's just make this a little bit more aesthetically pleasing by hiding our axes, hiding our grid. And the last thing I'll do is go down here to settings for the view, find the background color, set it to dark gray. Nice. Okay, so I'm gonna create that picture that we saw at the beginning where there was like that triangle and it had like kind of three copies of something like this and they all look different colors. I promise you that doing that works exactly the same way as what we just did here. So if you are comfortable with how that went, you just do it three more times and you get that picture. So I'm gonna go ahead and make those extra pieces right now just so we can see the whole picture, but I'll, uh, I'll speed up the video so you don't have to watch the whole thing. All right, here we go. And there we go, our completed art project inside GeoGebra here. We can move it around however we like, we can change the triangle. Whatever you think looks best, you can go ahead and do it. And you could use this same sort of construction to make you know, different configurations of these little string guys. Actually, here's one that I made you know, off screen. It's just the same exact pattern, just in a different configuration. It's a little you know, plus sign thing. I think it's pretty cool. And so yeah, experiment see what you can come up with. All right, that's gonna do it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you decided to follow along on your own in GeoGebra, I hope it went well. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions that came up or if there's anything along these lines that you'd like to see in a future video. In the next video, we'll be doing even more, you know, string art in GeoGebra, but we'll be doing it with more circular patterns. And I'll show you how to make something that looks like this. But until then, go ahead and give this video a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more fun math content, and I will see you in the next video.